Hi, I'm Jimmy. So this NVIDIA stock analysis is a collaboration video I did with a cool YouTube channel called Everything Money. So I drove out to Ohio and met with them from New Jersey, spent a few days there and I was super impressed. We have a different style and our investing processors are a little bit different, but I think both can be very valuable and our underlying beliefs of, about investing are very similar. So if you haven't done so yet, please click on their channel and I'll leave a link in the description below and at the end of the video. So go check them out, they really are awesome. Subscribe to their channel, let them know I sent you, and now let's jump into the NVIDIA analysis. Hi, I'm Jimmy, it's good to be here, very excited. <laughs> People love that intro, Jimmy is here. Uh, we invited him here to Akron, he drove here. Uh, we wined and dined him last night, Paul. Yes, you did, we had steaks and drinks. And uh, today we've been analyzing- out of the restaurant. We, we, that's right, we're analyzing uh, stocks today, and we'd like to look at another one, NVIDIA, Paul. NVIDIA is the chip maker. We've done this stock before. This is this company is 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 um Jimmy has not analyzed this, but we'd like to get your fresh take on Nvidia and Paul yours too, an update on Nvidia using our eight pillars, our software, the financials. We'd like you viewers at home to uh, put aside what actually the company might be doing in terms of a ticker price, and uh, and let's look at the financials to see if that ticker price is justified. I almost just spilled my coffee, Paul. Let's get after. Nvidia, my dear friend. So they friend. make chips. Mm -hmm. Their chips are different than Intel's. Potato I don't chips, think it's, it's right? not the same thing. I don't know. I mean, I don't know what kind of designing gra graphics processing units. I want to make comment here. Go on. Five hundred twenty-six billion dollar market cap. Intel's, Intel's two hundred fourteen. 215. Yep. Okay. Oh wow! Holy cow! Okay. Ready? So that's massive. Revenue addition. twenty-two billion. Uh -oh. Intel is seventy-seven billion. You remember all these numbers? Net income is seven billion. I think their profit was eighteen or twenty billion. Their free cash flow, four billion. Intel's was eighteen or sixteen. To me, immediately, I'm like, oh my god, this just seems so overpriced. Five year PE, one thirty three, and that's an X. Hold on a minute, Paul. You, you, wow. Okay, you went through that fast. The market cap for Intel, two fourteen. Revenue, seventy seven billion in comparison to twenty two billion. Oh my gosh, a net income, eighteen and a half billion versus seven. Five year average free cash flow of eighteen. Uh, 15, 15 billion. versus yeah. four. My whole point is it doesn't mean NVIDIA in and of itself is expensive, but go understand why. Maybe they're growing at 100% a year for the rest of the time. I say that facetiously because they're not, but I there see. might be some level where they're growing so much that over longer periods of time, they could surpass Intel. And of but, course, Paul, you're not talking about expensive in terms of a stock price because NVIDIA is 211, Intel's 52. No, I'm talking about valuation. What does that stock, what does that market cap get you? But look at the return on invested capital. It is higher than Intel's. It's 14.8%. And last year it was 24.4%. So that is a check mark there. So, so far we have one big X and a really good check mark. Pillar number three is revenue growth over the past five years, Paul. 8.3, 21.9. Oh but look at this. Last year was a massive jump from 13 to 22. Usually when I see big jumps in big companies like that, I wonder to myself, did they make an acquisition? because it is very difficult for a company of this size to grow 60, 70% in one year, okay? Net income growth, the last five years, 2.3 to 7.8, 7.08. So interesting again, 2.3, 4.3, 2.75, 3.47, 3 doubled in one year. Again, don't know why, but we'll find out. Shares outstanding. Pillar number five, baby. 2.39 to 2.49. So it's an X, not by much, not by a lot. Look at their uh, shares, uh, their average diluted shares outstanding. So it's been pretty much, it's the same over the last five years. It could have been people exercising options, a bunch of other things that could have happened. Now, remember, their total free cash, their five-year average free cash was four billion. What we do is we multiply this number by five and we want their total long-term liabilities as our sixth pillar yes. under $20 billion. If it's under five, it means if they just repeat the last five years over again, they could pay off all their long-term liabilities within the next five years. So we go to the balance sheet, and my guess is it's a definite check mark. We scroll, scroll to the bottom, 13 billion. So they definitely are way below the five, the, the metric of five times free cash flow for their long-term liabilities. Jimmy, your take on the first six pillars, our process versus what you're thinking, how are those hitting your ear? Yeah, I mean, I think that the pillars are very, I think that they're logical. I think that I like the way of you're analyzing the debt to, and you're comparing it to something to see, all right, is it overvalued? Uh, or not, is it overvalued, but is it over leveraged? Yeah. And uh, I, I think that the comparison to Intel market cap wise and all that, I, I think it makes sense. 
I think that the P he had 133 over the past five years is crazy. Even 74 right now is crazy. <laughs> now, Intel's trading at, what was it, a, you know, 11, 11 or 12? 12. <laughs> yeah. Well, fine. I don't think NVIDIA should be at 11 or 12. The market's at 20 something. Let's pretend NVIDIA could be slightly above the market. That would still imply that the stock is double as expensive as it should be. So one of the things I do different, I don't look at where the market is right now when determining my PE. I look at it and say, where should the market be overall? And where is this company relative to that? So if I think the market overall should sell for 15 times earnings, that's where I start my baseline. Just like if the market was suddenly at five times earnings, hypothetically. 1982, the stock market was at 4.8 times the last 10 years earnings. I wouldn't go value a company at six times earnings and giving it a premium. I would say, no, it should be selling for 15 times earnings mm -hmm. because that's the normal market. We're just in a very low market. So that's what I do a little bit different you know, when, when comparing things. Yes. Yeah, so what the point of Paul and I and Mo on the show, we use our eight pillars to get our initial screener, get a high level view of the company. If we start liking it, uh, we, we might look deeper. Jimmy does much more deeper dives on these companies. So if you can go to learn to invest and follow him, of course, subscribe to his channel, you can see a much more in-depth uh, view of some of the companies that he's investing in. And uh, it, it's very, you want to talk about due diligence, Paul, this guy is really getting after it. So um, we did pillar number six. Let's get after the Pillar seven and eight. Seven and eight. The granddaddy of them all is pillar number seven, which is free cash flow growth. Paul, we want that free cash flow. Austin, you notice. 1.95 to 6.67. Now, I do want to make note, acquisitions and dispositions, 7 billion and 1.35 in the last two years. What so does they, that mean again? Tell me. They, they made acquisitions. It's a negative number, so it's cash flow out. They made net acquisitions in those two years. So that's why you see a big jump in revenue. Okay, this is a big acquisition. You can Google it probably and find out what company did Intel, did um, NVIDIA buy before July 2020, it'll tell you. So their free cash flow is increasing and the average is 4 billion. What we like to do is take that average, multiply by 20 as a starting point for market cap. $80 billion market cap. Now slow down a minute. This is our pillar number eight, folks. So we take their free cash, we multiply by 20, which is just an initial multiple to get what we think is a desired market cap. Let's start getting us interested. And you came up with 80, Paul? Yeah, 80. Oh the, the market cap's 500 and some billion. So this is definite X here. Oh boy. 500 what? 526. 526, definite X. Oh, Guys, and guess what? No. At 74 times earnings in the last year, it makes sense. It's got to fall by 80% essentially to get to where we wanted to be. And even at... 526 dropping by 80%. It doesn't get to our $80 billion market cap still. But the point is, guys, it is an overpriced company. And every metric we've seen so far in this fight and the financials says that. Wouldn't you agree, Jimmy? I agree completely. And I'm curious, the free cash flow, how are you guys calculating it? Is it just cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures? Correct. Okay, good. Yeah, that's the way. I, so if you've ever studied this stuff in a textbook, they probably have more complicated ways of doing it. No, keep but, it simple. Yeah, that, I think that's the simplest way of doing it. And uh, if NVIDIA was in the sweet spot, Jimmy, where would you go from here? You know, one of your more famous videos is the eight steps and you take and, and properly doing due diligence on a company. So where would you go from here for our NVIDIA lovers, regardless of this price? Yeah, so the, the interesting part about your process versus my process is my process is I have a different way of identifying companies uh, that look good. And the super short version of that is I want to see a company jump off a cliff. You know, I was interested in Intel when Intel had was down like 20% in two days. Okay, now I'm interested. Let me go research it. And my process is more around the the eight steps in that in that video is more analyze the business. Do you understand what the business does? Because I think that there's nothing worse than having something go wrong with a company and you didn't even know that the company did that. You know what I mean? You, we might look at NVIDIA and not, without digging into what the company actually does, there might be huge growth opportunities that we're missing or there might be a huge problem. We might read about what they do and be like, yeah, that's going away. Yeah, hey, I, can I interrupt real quick? Yeah. I see these valuations here and guess what I do? Moving on. That's exactly what Jimmy said. Jimmy's like, listen, I look for a lot of value investors will sit there and say, let me see all the 52 week lows. That's how they weed out. Like, oh, 52 week low has been hit. Okay, let's see why that's the case. For me, like in a video company, I don't care if they make time machines. <laughs> this is too expensive for me. Or they're going to, or they're, they're thinking about making time machines in the future. I mean, well, no you're going to get a better course, valuation I mean, if they think about making time machines. Yeah, because like a lot of these this companies. This world pays for ideas more, more than results. That's so, from going, Paul. Yes. So, anyways, I'm. And then I put it in stock analyzer tool really quick, figure it out and move on. Keep and going, I Jim. agree 
And that's what I think is the difference in the process here is let's say we go through the eight pillars and we like the company and it's, you know, okay, this looks pretty good. Or maybe we're even on the fence about it. Well, then the eight eight steps to analyze the stock that I have on my channel. Well, now it's more, okay, let's really understand the business. I go through reading the business section of the annual report, look at the uh, management discussion and analysis. I jotted them all down just so I didn't forget. Uh, financial statement analysis, which we're sort of getting a jump start on that here. Yep. And then uh, from there, I listen to earnings calls, look at some competitors. And that is, you know, Paul has the advantage of he already knows Intel. If uh, individual is doing this, if you were doing this and you didn't know any other comparison points, you might not realize that this is so overpriced compared to a company like Intel. Well, at that step in the eight steps to analyzing a stock, you're going to recognize, wow, some of these competitors, AMD, Intel, these guys are doing things that makes me challenge, okay, is this the best company? There's been many times where I set out analyzing a company and then when I get to the competitor analysis, I'm like, no, throw that one out. I like this one better. Mm -hmm. I don't don't do enough of that. I just look at individual companies, so I probably should do more of that. But uh, why don't you look at your your stock analyzer tool and show us your um, inputs? Yeah, okay, stock analyzer tool. So... I have not plugged them in yet. Oh, then let me do mine. You do yours. I'll so guys, a lot of this growth here in the last 10 years, especially of last year, was acquisitions. So I'm discounting this, this growth big time. I'm going 10, 15, 20%. In fact, I should probably get rid of the 20%. But because I, I saw the acquisitions, let me sit here and go 8, 12, 16%. Shares outstanding, share change. I went 4, 2, and 0. Profit margin, 25, 27, 30 Free cash flow, pretty similar, but not exactly. PE, 14, 16, 18. Price of free cash flow, 14, 16, 18. Returns, 15, 12 and a half, 10. The stock is currently at 211. We hit the analyze tool. I mean, look at this. Oh boy. 50, 50 bucks. And guess what? This thing drops by 75%, you're 50 bucks. And I still think it has room. To, and that's with the revenue growth being um, you know, double digits. Let's so, be very clear. This is what we would like to pay for the stock to get our desired return. This is not what we think the stock should be, but it kind but, of is, right, Paul? I well, mean, you know, remember, guys, in the stock market, you're going to get about a 10% return overall over long periods of time. So when I'm doing 12.5% here, I'm sitting there saying, listen, this is my value. This is my margin of safety here. I want to make a little bit more money because I could be wrong. So I want to buy for at here or lower. And right now, we're not even close. As opposed to a company like Intel, which it's selling at $53, and there are some valuations that can easily put it at $70 or $80, and I do think it's a $70 or $80 stock. Jimmy, what do you think over there? Yeah, I'm, I'm tripped up on the PE. What'd you do for PE over here? I, I did uh, 14, 16, 18. Not 74, Paul? <laughs> no, I did not. Because I look at it going like, okay, even if this company is growing, I think 14, 16, 18 is... Uh, very fair for them. I'm fine with that. But here's a different question, right? If we look at the history of the stock market, yeah, and I, sure, I can give you 15. I think that's a little low. I think if we looked at the S&P 500 over the past 50 years, I bet you'd be closer to 20. But hypothetically, doesn't it make sense to lock in these numbers, like the PE? You know, I guess you could adjust it for growth, I suppose. But from company to company, you know, if we did... 15, 17, I, that's what I'll, I'll do that. I'll do 15, 17 and a half and so you're 20. you're saying in the software to lock it in? Yeah, just we're doing not that. Not for you guys, but for the user, for that's the person who's trying to do it and says, you know what? I'm going to keep this from company to company. I'm going to call this the long-term average. Yep, that's what we're doing. Yeah, okay. And you can change it because we want to make sure that that's the case. 17.5 and then I'll go 20. I think, I think that's more reasonable. I believe I've looked at, I believe I did a video where I looked at the history of the, the, the PE ratio for the S&P 500 in different companies, and I believe it was closer to 20. Uh, it was like 18 or 19. So this, by the way, this is off multiple.com. The historical average for PE is 16. Now that's going back to 1870. That is going back to 1870. So if you want to scroll up a little bit, go back the last 50 years from here to here. It probably is closer to 20. You're right. It probably is closer to 20. But with some major bull markets here, some major big time bull markets. What price are you getting over there, Jim? Okay, so I uh, used a uh, desired annual return of 15, 12 and a half, and 10. And then I get, where's that, 211. Uh, <laughs> 40 on the low, 68, and 116. So it seems what I would say to be crazy overvalued. Yeah, that's, 
And to yeah. me, and I think Jimmy would agree, if he did this, he'd be like, next. I and mean, he wouldn't even waste any more time on it. He's like, and that's Why? exactly the thing. I think yeah. that the beautiful part about this process compared to the process that I do is that this is, okay, you don't, you don't, my process takes more time. There's no doubt about that. But you can breeze through 40 companies. Maybe you come out with one or two or three yeah. that are, hey, these are great. Let me do it. Then you go through the process that I have, and you're going to get to the end going, not only do I like the company I'm buying, I know what they do. I'm confident in where they're going. It's uh, I the entire process. This is, in my opinion, great for you know. You have an idea where the numbers are. And then the only thing. Yeah, tell only, me, tell me the final steps. If, if if this was green, you were liking Nvidia. Yeah. So this is so I did company and I did competitor analysis. Then I try to come up with a fair value. So for me, I usually do discount or free cash flow. This whole thing sort of gets you to a similar spot. Not necessarily the numbers are the same, but it gives you an idea compared to the current price. But to me, you could hypothetically, if this was close, pretend it was closer, I could get here, it's 211, pretend the middle number was 200. I'm perfectly happy. The, I have weight, come up with a fair value, then I have identified drivers in the stock. That's sort of a, a different thing to see what really moves. You know? And it's basically go back and look at news and see what is ultimately driving. For a company, I haven't looked at Intel, I mean, NVIDIA, so I'm not sure. But for a company like Intel, well, I know if their production slows down, the stock's going to be in trouble fast. So that's really what I'm focusing on. That's one of the things I'm looking for. But it's also the big opportunities. I wait for the news to come out that production has slowed somewhere, the stock will jump off a cliff, and there's the buying opportunity you're looking for. The final step in my process is wait for a buying, wait for a buying opportunity. It's not even buy the stock. It is... You came up with a fair value. You've looked at the competitors. You know the company. You know the numbers. Now, where do you really want to buy it? And then once that's done, put it aside. I call it a bullpen. I have a bullpen of stocks that I'm interested in. I put it in the bullpen, wait for it to get there. If it's there, great. I'm going to buy it. If it's not there, I'm moving on to the next one. You're, you're not calling it a bear pin instead of a bull? <laughs> Paul, you know, um, I get that joke. That was good. I agree. Click the link below. Click the link also to subscribe to Jimmy's channel, Learn to Invest. If you want that deep dive, he will give it to you. Uh, and and, uh, and we like this partnership, Paul. We are hesitant with collabs, but we're in love with Jimmy, and I think the feeling is mutual. We're excited where we're, both channels are going. Jimmy will be launching a Patreon in the very near future, so you can join his community as well and get more access to him. Very, very exciting times. And when that market tanks, Paul, it's very exciting for us value investors. Let's do it. Thanks, Jimmy. Thanks for the insight, and uh, thanks for watching the video. Final thumbs up on the way out. We'll see you next one. See you.